Good morning and welcome to our worship on this 10th Sunday after Trinity. Um, and this week we have a complete change of personnel for you, both at the front and also behind uh, the camera. So a particular welcome to Fred Bond, who is in charge of things technological this morning for this service. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. May your loving mercy come to me, O Lord, and your salvation according to your word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light to my path. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Let your mercy come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope but always to bring our prayers before you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please would you now sit for our readings. Psalm 67, and the response to the psalm is, let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Let, let the, the peoples, peoples praise you, you O God. God. Let, let all the peoples praise you. God, be merciful to us and bless us, and make your face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth and your saving power among all nations. Let, let the, the peoples, peoples praise you, O God. God. Let, let all, all the peoples, peoples praise you. Let the nations rejoice and be glad. For you will judge the peoples righteously and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. May God give us his blessing, and all the ends of the earth shall stand in awe of him. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. For soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather, I'll gather others to them besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. God. 
The response to our canticle is sing his praise and exalt him forever. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you heavens. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you angels of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all people on earth. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. O people of God, bless the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you priests of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you servants of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all you of upright spirit. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Let us now stand for the Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. My house shall be called a house of prayer. These are the words from the book of Isaiah that Jesus recalled when he cleansed the temple in Jerusalem, overturning the tables of the money changers. He was referring people back to the passage from the Old Testament, which we heard this morning. Our temples, our churches, must be houses of prayer, first and foremost. The phrase has struck a chord, it is remarkable how many retreat houses refer to themselves as houses of prayer. For Jesus' purposes in the temple, the quotation, my house shall be called a house of prayer, was sufficient. But the passage from the book of the prophet Isaiah, which Jesus quoted, goes on further. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. This vision for the house of God provided clarity for the people of Israel all that time ago, 
when the treatment of foreigners was the subject of discussion and debate in their society, not so very different from our day. The message from the prophecy of Isaiah is clear, a house of prayer for all peoples, foreigners who accept the Lord included. And not only are they to be included, but the Lord will bring them to his holy mountain and make them joyful in his house of prayer. They are to be included on an equal basis, given their love for the Lord. They are to be welcomed and experience happiness in the Lord's house. Sometimes our lectionary, the Church of England's list of Bible readings for services, leaves out verses which may be a bit awkward to discuss, but are nonetheless important. Isaiah chapter 56 verses 3 to 5, which were left out in our reading this morning, make clear that along with foreigners, eunuchs were to be welcomed in the house of prayer and that the Lord, and I quote, will give them a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Now, this idea came back to people as they considered the setting up of the Holocaust Memorial in Jerusalem. The idea that there are people who do not have sons and daughters to remember them, but that the Lord would give them a monument and a name, inspired the creation of a room in Jerusalem at the Holocaust Memorial. It commemorates the 1.5 million children murdered at the instigation of the Nazis. These children were denied the opportunity to have their own sons and daughters. But God's promise to them is that they will be remembered. A similar sentiment, I believe, underlies our commemorations of Fiji Day, when we remembered not only those known to us, people in our own families who were part of the effort in the Far East, a scarring experience for many of them, but also those who have no descendants or perhaps not even friends or colleagues who know their story. Through our faith, we can be confident that the Lord will remember them eternally. The Lord's vision in, of his house is not only described in the prophecy of Isaiah, but it is argued for on the grounds of justice. It is about doing what is right. The Lord's house will include both the outcasts of the community of Israel and the foreigners who will be added to their number. No one will be excluded on the basis that other people may find them different, strange, or foreign. This vision is a challenge and reminder to us today. When we think of the reception in some of our churches of people from the West Indies, the Windrush generation, who were invited to Britain to help in our hospitals and railways. Many did not receive the joy that the Lord wished for them in our churches. Sometimes they endured the very opposite and had to leave churches until they found a friendly one. If only the Lord's vision for his temple could have been at the forefront of people's hearts and minds at that time, a house of prayer for all peoples. Turning now to our gospel reading, we have an intriguing encounter between Jesus and a foreigner, a Canaanite woman. The dialogue between Jesus and the woman 
would be a good subject for a Bible study as it lends itself to so many interpretations. But today, let us look at this encounter in the light of the passage from Isaiah. Jesus chooses to go to Canaan, a foreign land. There has been historic enmity between Israel and Canaan, and tensions still remain. He meets a woman from the region who approaches him by shouting, and his disciples urge him to just send her away. They do not like her manner. Perhaps they seemed, she seemed strange or she certainly was foreign. But the woman was persistent. She is a mother and her daughter is ill, tormented by a demon. Although she is not Jewish herself, she recognizes Jesus as Lord and son of David. In keeping with the Lord's house of prayer for all peoples, Jesus includes the woman and her child in his ministry. And he commends her. Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. So what should we draw from all this now in our time of strangeness? Just as the Israelites in exile sought the Lord's guidance for how things should be when they returned to Jerusalem and to their temple, we need to have a vision for our churches for the future, post-pandemic. We do not know how far into the future this will be, and the uncertainty is a challenge for every facet of our society. But whatever our specific ideas may be, we must hold in mind that our churches must be houses of prayer, places open for contemplation and reflection, and that they must be for all peoples. Even now, with current constraints and strangenesses, not least what I'm wearing, let us ensure that we do right by the Lord and that our churches can bring his joy to all who cross our thresholds and all who watch online. A house of prayer for all peoples. Amen. Let us now stand to affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I believe. Please would you now sit for our intercessions. Trusting in our faithful God, let us pray in confidence. We pray for the family of the church 
May all who come find love and friendship, acceptance and leadership. Help your church to be an instrument of peace and healing, a beacon of love, hope and direction in this community of Wilton, the country and across the world. Faithful God, as we call to mind the stormy areas of our world, the insecurities, fear, confusion and bewilderment, let your calming and reassuring presence be sensed and recognised, bringing peace and goodness, righteousness and hope. Loving Lord, come to us in the torments and pain of our journey through life. Grant us your strength and patience, tolerance and understanding, and bless us with the love that never lets us down. We bring before you all those who have received or are awaiting exam results at this time of confusion and discord. Grant to them your wisdom and courage in the journey and decisions they will make. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are afraid, lonely, marginalised, scorned or rejected, and those who suffer in mind, body and spirit. Surround them in your love and light, that they may know your presence and that they are precious to you. We pray for those who have recently died and those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time. Grant them eternal peace and a place in your everlasting kingdom. And in a few minutes of silence, let us offer our personal prayers to the one who always listens. And together, let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now, for the first time in quite a while, I have some bands of marriage to read. I published the bands of marriage between Christopher Osborne and Rose Fallows, both of the parish of All Saints Fulham in the Diocese of London, and with a qualifying connection to this parish. If any of you knows a reason why these persons may not lawfully marry, you are to declare it. And this is for the first time of asking. Um, on to other things, I am intended to, to produce a parish newsletter for distribution in September, um, it would be very good to know who out of our normal team of deliverers can or can't do their round uh, this September. So if you are able to help, um, or you might be able to join and plug any gaps, please do leave me a message on the phone or an email to confirm that, and I'll compile the list before we uh, need to do it. Speaking of emails, Christine informs me she's had to completely redo the contact list uh, this last week, thanks to BT improving things, apparently. Um, so I hope you received your parish update this week. If you didn't get an email, please would you let Christine know, and we'll make sure that you are on that list again. There are various things being revised almost as we speak certainly this week, so I'll keep in informed of changes as they happen. But if you didn't get an update this week, let us know and we'll correct it. And thank you, Christine, for ploughing through that lot of, lot of names. 
Um, back to this morning then, F final reminder, please at the end of the service, would you please remain seated until the organ voluntary is finished and then we'll guide you out safely at the end. So please let the music finish and then you'll be guided out at the end. Let us stand then for God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.